Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. I would paraphrase. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, nothing more. Give to God what belongs to God, nothing less. Jesus makes this very familiar response to a question put to him by the Pharisees, a question intended to trip him up. In the Gospel reading for the past four weeks, Jesus has depicted the Pharisees in parables. As tenants of the vineyard who refuse to give the contract of produce to the landowner, as invited wedding gifts who refuse to come to a banquet, as the son who said yes to his father, I will go into the vineyard to work, but never does. As all day workers who grumbled with jealousy because the vineyard owner gave all the workers the same pay, regardless of the number of hours worked. In today's gospel, it is the Pharisees who initiate the encounter. The Pharisees did not approve of Roman rule over the Jewish people and resented paying a tax to the foreign king. They worshipped God, who alone was their king. And so they sent their disciples along with some Herodians. Herodians were Roman sympathizers and supporters of the family of Herod the Great. And they supported the collection of a Roman census tax. And they came to Jesus to pose the question, Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Is it right for a Jew to pay taxes to Rome? It was a trick question. If Jesus said taxes should not be paid, he pleased the Pharisees, who could report him as an insurgent and have him arrested. If he said taxes should be paid, he pleased the Herodians, but would discredit himself with his own people. What can we learn from this encounter? Yes, the Pharisees intended to trap Jesus. But there is a larger concern for the Jews of Jesus' day and for us today. The question is, is it possible to be faithful both to God and to a secular power? Roman taxation was an issue that caused people to take sides, much like the upcoming election in two weeks. The Pharisees and Herodians who asked Jesus this question about taxes interested in only one thing, getting Jesus into trouble with the authorities. Jesus saw through their ploy, but instead of ignoring or humiliating them, he taught them a lesson. And that lesson is as, as valid today as it was 2,000 years ago. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. We have dual citizenship each with its own benefits and duties. Our birth made us citizens of an earthly nation. Our baptism made us citizens of a heavenly kingdom. Sometimes they overlap. But earthly citizenship will end while our heavenly citizenship will last for all eternity. It's obvious what citizenship is most important. Christian saints and martyrs have taught us that a force to choose between the two. If ever Caesar tries to take what belongs to God, we must be true to our Catholic faith, even if it means painful consequences here on earth. But today's gospel reminds us that as far as possible, we need to live out both of these citizenships responsibly. How can we do that? What exactly belongs to God? The answer is obvious. Everything. All that we are, all that we possess, and all that we hope for comes from God. Everything belongs to God. Our very lives are a gift from God. Just as the Roman coin used to pay the tax, the census tax, the denarius, for the image of the emperor who made it, so too our human souls bear the image and likeness of God, our Creator, our Father, who made us. belongs to Caesar. Caesar represents our civic or political community. The duties of our earthly citizenship are real. The duty to give back to society
society through obedience to good laws, the responsibility to pay taxes and to perform community service. In the United States, where we participate directly in the political process, we have two other responsibilities. In recent weeks, many of our Catholic bishops have encouraged parishioners to vote intelligently and responsibly in the upcoming elections. You can and you should read their position statements on any number of Catholic websites. Our first responsibility is to make an effort to become informed about the important political and social issues facing our state and country so we can vote, and we must vote, intelligently and responsibly. This is not always as easy as it sounds. Not all issues are on the same level, even though much of our secular news media fails to realize this. Our Catholic faith allows us to distinguish between foundational and secondary issues. Treating unborn children like the disease that abortion does is a foundational injustice. What good are any of our human rights if innocent children never make it out of the womb? Treating homosexual unions like true marriages is a foundational injustice. God planned for marriage between a man and a woman. When we vote for political candidates and issues as Roman Catholics, we cannot pretend that these kind of foundational issues are on the same level as other important but secondary issues. Issues like the economic downturn, bank failures, taxes, the war in Iraq, the energy crisis. These issues are certainly important, and many citizens in our country and many parishioners at Mary Queen are, have, and will be affected by current events. But these issues are like the walls of a house. You can knock out a wall, you can rearrange a room without the house falling down. But if you ignore the foundation, you lose the whole structure. Because foundational issues are at stake in this election, we must give them first priority. Foundational issues are things that belong to God, not to Caesar. And when Caesar tries to take them over, we, who are God's children, must defend them. Voting for candidates who support foundational issues, like the right to life, is basic to our faith. But staying informed about an important part of events is only half of our democratic responsibility. Our second duty as Catholics is to help build a civilization of Christian justice and love. In the United States, where we have the opportunity to do this by speaking with family, friends, and colleagues, having conversations about social virtues and values that reflect Catholic social teaching. Many of our friends and colleagues and neighbors want to make the right decision in the voting booth, but don't understand the difference between foundational and secondary issues. They want to know the truth on these complicated matters. The single biggest influence on how people vote is not the mass media, but the input and advice they get from friends and colleagues. We should never, ever be afraid to explain the Church's teaching on foundational issues. You've heard it said many times. All it takes for evil to triumph is for good men and good women to do nothing. In our United States, where good and evil are still fighting it out, let's do something. Let's give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and nothing more. And let's give to God what belongs to God, and nothing less.